back to the Book Talk segment of the show. Great to welcome right now a man who's written a very interesting, fascinating historical book. It's called The Indispensables, The Diverse Soldier Mariners Who Shaped the Country, Formed the Navy, and Rode Washington Across the Delaware. We're joined today by Patrick K. O'Donnell. He's a uh, acclaimed military historian, written many books on uh, uh, the subject, uh, military, and this one, of course, uh, about the Revolutionary War back in the late 1700s, and it's a fascinating book, and we're joined by uh, Patrick O'Donnell on the telephone today. Patrick, good to talk with you. How are you? Great to be with you, Doug. I'm, I'm great. I have to say I'm slightly yeah, embarrassed because I grew up in New York, and I didn't know any of this uh, history about what happened in, in, yeah. the, in the area not too far from where I grew up in Long Island, so I, I was very fascinated by it. I'm glad I read it. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Yeah, the book is a, it was an instant bestseller the, on publication day seven days ago, and uh, we had a rave review in Wall Street Journal and it hit number three on uh, Barnes & Noble worldwide out of like 8 million books sold and number six on Amazon. And uh, it's been a really great ride. People are, are really uh, enjoying it and then, you know, making connections. And, and it's about our, our founding story, which is our most important found, uh, story. But it's also about a lot of untold, unknown things like you kind of bring up that were vital, that saved the American Revolution, saved the American idea from extinction. Yeah, cool. Congratulations on the success already. I know it just came out, like you said, uh, within the last week or so. Now, I had known there were you know battles in, in New York and Jersey, Trenton, and, of course, you know, uh, uh, Washington area and all that, but I didn't realize uh, Brooklyn and uh, you know not too far from where I, uh, where I was born in Brooklyn, but right you know, near there, and of course Manhattan itself. People don't tend to think of that, I guess. So there are still some monuments around, but you don't think of that area. You think of it as a huge city, but you don't think of uh, Washington being there fighting uh, the Revolutionary War. It's it's really interesting. Yeah, it you know there's so much history in plain sight in Manhattan and Brooklyn that it just will astound most of the listeners and. The Battle of Brooklyn, you know, arguably is as important as the Battle of Gettysburg. And the reason being is it was a situation in time where our country would have been completely lost had it not been for the actions of the men that I write about in The Indispensables. Um, It's 1776, it's August, and the, the British had inflicted upon us a crushing defeat. There's a, I wrote a book, a book called Washington's Immortals, which right. talks about an epic stand that bought an hour more precious in our history than any other. And that the Marylanders do that. And they, the army retreats into its fortifications at Brooklyn Heights. And then it's there that Washington has a decision to make. Does he stand and fight or retreat? And he wisely decides to retreat. The retreat falls upon the soldiers, uh, uh, the soldier mariners of the book that I wrote, The Indispensable. These are the men that have to row the army across these rivers. It's a mile long. It's a raging river, and the winds aren't cooperating. And that night, the men of the Marblehead Regiment are told that they're going to attack. But instead of attacking, they make their way to the boats, and they're told, guess what? You don't have any time to prepare, but you're going to row the entire army of nearly 10,000 men across the East River. (laughs) (laughs) And they do it. And it's a miracle because the river is a swirling mess. The winds are raging. Um, not, the wind isn't favoring us. They, they don't get anywhere. And the, the operation is initially called. They try to call it off, but they can't find Washington that night. And so it proceeds. And um, luckily, the wind changes. But remarkably, the wind doesn't favor the British, who are in a massive armada. They can literally sail up the East River and surround the Americans and blow the little tiny boats that we have that are conducting this American Dunkirk right out of the water. But yeah. the wind doesn't favor them. They're not able to. And the Marbleheaders make nearly a dozen trips across the East River. And this is, uh, if you're familiar with the Brooklyn Bridge, this is it, it's, it's in the area of what is now the Brooklyn Bridge oh, where sure. they made the, the amphibious retreat. And, um, you know, the morning comes, dawn comes, a portion of the army still is there and it's panicking. They're, they're not, they're, they need to get out of there quickly. And the sun is coming up. <coughs> Washington is involved. He's one of the last to go. And, you know, it's an amazing scene where he holds a rock above his head and says he will sink the boat to hell if the men don't, um, you know, basically behave <laughs> and get in the boat. And they do. And at this time, a miraculous fog sets in and screens the movement of the, the army from the prying eyes of the British, uh, you know, from the British army. And they're able to cross and evacuate the men. Yeah. But that's just one incident in this book. 
of many, many times where the, the Marbleheaders, uh, named for the town that they lived in, saved Washington's army. And that's why they're called the Indispensable. And, and what makes it even more interesting, and a lot of people would be surprised, I was, that uh, the Marbleheaders had a black, Hispanic, and, uh, and Indian, right, Native American people in the, in the group, in yeah. addition to white folks, white, <laughs> white soldiers. Yeah, this, this, is, this is a diverse unit. Um, one of the first and one of the most diverse in the Continental Army. And it's a story of not only diversity, but unity, how these um, individuals from different ethnic backgrounds, as well as socioeconomic classes, that there's rich guys in here as well as the poorest of the poor, are able to come together and, uh, as a team. And, and they're one of the greatest fighting regiments in American history. And they saved the war uh, multiple times because they're in the right place at the right time at the key inflection points. And it's their, their human agency or their actions that literally change the course of history. And um, I capture that in a narrative format that, that reads like it's novel-like, according to the Wall Street Journal. But this is all a heavy research load, all scholarly, <clears throat> primary sources, over a thousand end notes. Um, exhaustively researched. Took me five years to scour the ends of the earth. I, I was a I'm a fellow at the uh, at Mount Vernon, right? And I sat there uh, on site for six months, and I wrote this book and researched it. But it took me five years to actually complete the task. But it was, I was going to ask you that was extraordinary. The, the detail is incredible, and uh, I was going to say, what what do you look for first in your research? I guess there's some newspapers, I'm not sure, maybe not, or notes, I guess. Or How did you find that information? It was a lot. Uh, there, there were a lot of things. I, I used contemporary newspapers for the time. Uh, I used uh, diaries, letters, right. uh, stuff that had never been published for the most part. And then something called uh, pension applications. And if you were lucky enough to survive the revolution and you made it all the way to 1820, you go under oath and uh, tell your story to a judge to get a pension application. But that, that, that story under oath are some of the greatest oral histories of the revolution that have never been published for the most part. And I, my, uh, the indispensables is imbued with those, the voices of the men, the participants and women um, that did, you know, these extraordinary things in the book. Yeah, I know you talk about in the book, uh, the soldiers, like you said, if you survived it, you got a pension. It wasn't a lot, but I guess it was better than nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was something because it's really sad. Most of these individuals, uh, including the African American individuals in the book, they they died. There there was serious poverty. I mean, sure. we're talking. Uh, they were lucky if they had a chair or a spoon uh, to their, you know, in their own personal holdings. Many of them were very impoverished. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know the sacrifice they made for our country and our liberty, which we take for granted. I think for mo- for the most part now. Um, my, I dedicated my book to them because their their sacrifice is extraordinary. Yeah, no doubt. And um, and many of them died, and many of them died during the war. Uh, many of them got PTSD based on the letters that I re- that I that I had, um, that I read, or they were bankrupt. It was a very uh, extreme resilience, uh, extreme hardship that these uh, men and women went through to to have the country we have today. Yeah, no doubt. Great, uh, great stories in the book. Again, called The Indispensables. And uh, Patrick K. O'Donnell's been our guest. Uh, we're just about out of time. And I know it's, it's doing so well, but uh, give out your website again, Patrick. Uh, they can get more information about you uh, as well as the book. Sure. It's Patrick K. O'Donnell, my name, dot com. And then I'm, I'm at my, my uh, Twitter handle is at combathistorian.com. Or it's, it, I'm sorry, it's at combathistorian. And then the book is on amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com. So it's in front of the store at Barnes & Noble. And uh, right on the table or the, the main display. Great. Well, Patrick, pleasure talking to you again. A fascinating book. I enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully you can talk again down the road. But thanks for being with us today. I love that. Yeah, please contact us. I'd love to come back on the air with you. I'm Stan Brock. 30 years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, We can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America.